What's up, speed skating fans? Welcome back to another GSN episode. Here with Victor Thorup and myself, Mitch Whitmore. And we're here to talk to you about how to get into speed skating. And that goes for all three disciplines. Yeah, that is our main goal here with this YouTube channel, is just to grow the skating community. And we figure, why not start with a video where we really dive into everything that you would actually need to know just to get into any discipline of skating, whether it's short track, inline skating, and long track. So if you're already so predetermined on what you want to do, some of this may not apply to you, but could be pretty interesting. From personal experience, and I know this is the case for a lot of skaters, you may not end up in the discipline you started out with, so it could be worth it listening all the way through. Yeah, very good point. Uh, most people kind of shift as they go, and I think as we have learned now that you know most of these all do tie together. And I think they're all a really good training tool, no matter which one is your actual specialty. So why don't we dive right in? Um, we're going to talk about inline skating first. Why are we talking about inline first? Why? It is the most accessible, and also it's amazing as a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up inline skating. I still, whenever I can convince my coach to let me, I still inline skate as much as possible. But the beauty of inline skating is, unlike short track and long track you really do not need anything but a rope, and those are pretty easy to come across. Yeah, the, the no location requirement is super nice. You know, if you're long tracking, especially let's say if you're in the US or Canada, you're very limited on which rinks or where the rinks are in proximity to you. So uh, inlining, really all you need is skates and a road, which everybody has nearby. Um, so we would say, yeah, you start with getting some skates, hitting the road outdoors, <laughs> Um, and then you can advance from there. And it goes for all these three disciplines when we say get some skates, we really mean it. Just get some skates. Yeah. It is you don't need fancy custom skates or spend a thousand dollars on the equipment. At first, you can learn so much just by feeling how skates feel. So don't worry too much about the quality of equipment. Um, you can get good beginner skates for not much more than a hundred dollars for a full complete set and then figure it out from there. Yeah, and uh, you know, the beginner skates are made that way for a reason. They give you a little bit of extra support, so if you don't have the ankle strength yet, um, or you're just not ready to move on to better skates, the beginner ones are perfect, and on inline spe specifically, roller blades are a great place to start. Um, and then there are plenty of options to go on from there, which you can go all the way up to the custom skates where they mold your foot. Um, but starting with the stock boots first, and seeing how you develop. Yeah, a good thing to remember is you should not overdo it when it comes to wheel size. Start with smaller wheels. We recommend, depending on your size or age, 84 millimeter wheels, maybe 90 millimeters, millimeters for beginners, and then slowly, you know, step up one wheel size by wheel size. If you want to save some money, you can always get the frame, so the lower part of the complete skate, uh, a frame that is able to to take larger wheels, you don't necessarily have to put them on. That way you won't have to purchase a new frame over and over every time you level up. So get a frame that can take say 110, 100 millimeter wheels, and then you're free to do anything smaller when it comes to wheel size to begin with. The reason for this is if you're closer to the ground, you have so much more maneuverability, it demands less angle strength, and that just makes it a lot more fun to skate. Yeah, uh, and moving on from there, you know, we would say to join a club, and possibly uh, get some coaching in addition to that. Um, you can start, a lot of the major cities have different group skates. Uh, so you can start with a group like that. And then if you want to transfer more into the speed realm, um, there's lots of other inline clubs around where you have a good group to work with. Um, and you'll get some coaching there, moving up to the next level. And with that, you can also shift into the bank track. There's indoor inlining. Uh, or racing on the road, and there's also marathons all over, which uh, yeah. you're going to be competing in soon. Yeah, there's one thing you'll realize if you're not into inline skating yet, that there are so many different ways to inline skate. There is, I think the most popular is just the social skates. Almost any major city in Europe, as well as here in the United States, they will have social skates, it's called Friday night skates, in almost all big cities. Where it's not about going fast, it's just about having a great time with friends or meeting friends. And that's also a really nice way to get into the sport. Just, yeah, skate with more people. Mitch just said, like, it is a very technical sport. It's unlike running or cycling where you can just Google, get me fit for a bike ride in <laughs> next months. Skating takes a lot of technical knowledge. 
And a really nice way to get that is either by good coaching or just skating with people that know how to skate and you can copy from them and figure it out. The next sport or discipline that we're gonna dive into is short track. Long track, but short. We do have more short track rinks on a worldwide basis. It's super convenient that they're sort of the same dimensions as an ice hard rink and those are popular. So for a lot of long track skaters, it also goes that they started out doing short track and that was a segue into that sport. Um, and it just teaches you some really cool fundamentals, I think. Yeah, we picked short track next because it's the next easiest to get into. There are tons of hockey rinks around. Um, sadly, some are NHL size, so it's a little bit smaller and you know less safe to be on, but there are still a lot of Olympic sized rinks, especially in Europe and the rest of the world. Um, but how we would suggest starting on that uh, is you know starting with some public sessions um, and then maybe working your way into a club. Now a lot of those places will have some rental skates, but even if you just get on some hockey skates, figure skates at first, just to see if you actually like the feeling of being on ice, um, and then you can shift into using the rental speed skates and work your way up from there. Um, and we pick short track next also because the tighter corners make it actually a little bit easier to skate. If you're new to skating and shifting to long track, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it's really hard to cross when you don't have any speed. So you need a certain level of proficiency before switching to long track, or at least a certain level of speed first. Yeah, I would also definitely say, say you're able to skate once a week in terms of how much joy do you get out of it. I would definitely rank inline first, then short track, then long track. It just takes more effort, more time to like actually feel like you master it. Right, yeah, most leisure inline, you can just, again, go outside and skate on the road. Uh, short track, you do need to find a club. You can't just, you know, hop yeah. out there <laughs> on your own. Uh, but some public sessions will let you have some short track skates if you just keep the speeds a little bit lower. Um, but how we would suggest once you actually get onto a club, uh, if you have some time of your own, is starting with some drills, uh, really learning the basics of short track because it is, in our eyes, a bit more technical uh, than physical, and that's going to be really important as you go forward while also keeping it fun. Yeah, definitely short trackers do care a lot about ice feel. Uh, if we are to compare the three disciplines, they are for sure in the professional you know, uh, league. They're the ones spending the most time on the ice by far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Agreed. The more time you can spend on ice, especially for the short tracks, the better you're going to be off. Just that feel aspect, like you were saying, is, is huge. I also cannot think of that many examples of skaters that have reached a professional level in short track where they didn't start really, really early with at least one of the disciplines. We're in long track, inline skating, we have seen a couple of skaters that start later on and still managed to pick it up where short track just seems like you really need a ton of hours on the ice. Yeah, uh, yeah again, I think the, the specific skill of short track is something that's going to be really hard to pick up later in life if you don't already have that basis early and also if you do get to start short track early i really think that there can be crossover even to the inlines um, but especially to long track you're just going to have better corners um, and cornering is more difficult to figure out for most people than straight away so it's going to give you a good sure. good platform to work from once you are actually on long track if that's the route you go yeah if we look at the equipment when you get to a high level what would you say the main differences are. I know they were cock proof, whereas on long track, inline skating, there's definitely no cock proof suits. Yes, so of course the safety equipment is a standard, and I think that's a standard across most of the world now for even the lowest levels of uh, like age group nationals type events, but uh, the blade length for sure increases as you go. So the kids, it's usually you know a little bit more space in the boots. Of course, you go to custom skates, which are super tight. Um, and then the blades get longer and then the bend and rock becomes very important. Um, I would say the equipment on short track is probably the most impactful, at least I feel that way. Um, a good bend and a good rock, you just kind of feel like it takes you through the corner for you. Yeah. Um, a bad one takes you that way and you don't want to go to the right. Yeah, um, I would say same goes for like the angle support in the boots. Yeah. You can easily skate in like sort of softer skates when it's inline skating long track. You do need a lot of support on short track because it's just simply more pressure. So that's not to shy away from using the, the lower level stuff at the beginning. Yeah. But once you're hitting speeds maybe in the under nine second range uh, for the lap, then uh, you're going to need some better stuff. And uh, there's uh, plenty of companies out there um, 
we like Viking. Yeah, uh, that's the their place yeah, for a while now. Uh, but it was uh, yeah, side note: the Viking Fury was really cool that it comes pre bent, um, and so all I did was put a rock on it, and they felt great skating on right away. So that was nice. Um, I know there's also EHS. Um, Maple isn't gonna start making blades again. Not sure what else is out there, but you got options on short track. That's actually a thing we should talk about because I remember from when I this goes for both short track and long track. When I switched to ice skating, I had absolutely no idea how to get my blades. All these terms we just talked about them rocked, bent, and sharpened. I assume there goes a bit of equipment into that. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, there's there's a lot involved, um, and like we were saying, sharpening is probably. A, a massive aspect that we didn't touch on. Um, short trackers generally like more grip because leaning harder into the corner. So maybe we can get away on long track with going a week or so without <laughs> sharpening. Short track, you're gonna want every couple of practices right. for sure. Now, if you have oh. no idea whatsoever on how to sharpen your skates, we made a video on it. Where Mitch is explaining exactly how to do that the best possible way. So check that out. Rocking, bending, biking, be the you. Get the fury. That was true. That was super nice that they are actually pre-bent. I checked the bend afterwards. I didn't check it before I skated. I checked after I skated it, and it was close Solid. enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like out of the box like that. That does not happen. So that was good. That's cool. Ketone half time. Our third and final discipline is long track speed skating. And we had this last because it generally is one that you're gonna start later on, um, or you know, you'll know you do the other two and shift into long track. Um, there are obviously less long tracks around the world because they're gigantic and expensive. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit harder to get into. You do need to move to a different location most of the time to actually get into long track. But once you get there, there's plenty of uh, ring or clubs and coaching to join while you actually get there. But um, yeah, it's it's much more difficult to initially start. Just to give you an idea of how hard that is, we are recording this early August, and at the moment there are three rinks in the entire world that are open for long track speed skating. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the most accessible sport. Yes, and again, because of the cost of actually keeping that rink open makes it really challenging. But that doesn't mean that you can't train for it. Like most of the long trackers around the world are using inlining, short track, and many other modalities. But as we said in the first two, using those for long track and vice versa is super important as you go through. Yeah, so do not fear and don't you know make it more complicated if you're at a location or even if your end goal is to become good at long track speed skating. If you have a nice inline skating club or a good short track rink, like, don't worry about it. Just start there, develop the skills, and we can definitely promise you they will carry over eventually. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, some of the things specifically once you are on long track, um, like we said before, the equipment is maybe less important at first, just getting on the skates, feeling how a clap skate works. Um, but we would even suggest if your club or that rink has fixed skates, just use those. Uh, it's it's not going to hurt your technique in the end, so you might as well at least be out there and skating. Um, also, skating on the warm-up lane first, just like we mentioned with short track, that skill of the corners is going to transfer over. It's also easier to corner when you're on that warm-up lane, just a little bit tighter. I wouldn't say starting with the outer lane is, is super helpful, again, unless you have enough speed for it. Um, but once you do, then I think racing as much as you can is crucial whether that's pack racing, time trials, or just even in practice doing as many like, you know, full lap efforts as you can. Yeah, like uh, this guy here, for example, our coach, local coach here from the fast team, almost every time we have a new skater coming from inline, short track, whatever, he throws them right into a flying lap just to have a good benchmark here. <laughs> and, you know, has never done any harm. Yeah. And it is really, I think you can only underestimate how much just the ice feel makes of a difference. Like put tie blades onto your game shoes and you will start feeling how it feels to be an ice. Yeah. And then you can always be good. Yeah, one of the, uh, we'll give you a teaser of maybe another video uh, for the biggest mistakes when coming from inline to ice is not just going for it. You know, most people, by the time they get on long track, already know how to skate to some extent. Mm -hmm. And 
being cautious or scared to race, I think, is one of the main reasons why people don't develop faster. Um, so yeah, just getting out there and let her, <laughs> let her <break. laughs> it is really important. Yeah, and I think it goes for all the sports, like be playful about it, uh, especially in inline skating. Uh, I think it's a big mistake that people just start out going into like long skates. That's what I did as a kid, like ended up skating 20 miles with old people and did not care about sprinting, did not care about agility, did not care about having fun. And it goes for all of these three disciplines, like just get out there, do random stuff and yeah, figure it out. Yeah, and actually from our coaches panel, Jeremy Witherspoon said the biggest mistake oh that Norwegians make is that, is that they don't offer enough true sprint events for the kids and they lose interest if that's yeah. not their thing. You know, skating 20 laps or 20 miles solo for a child <laughs> yeah, is a nice. long way, especially if they're meant to be a sprint athlete. So yeah, yeah doing 100 meter races, 300s, or if they are you know interested in the, the long ones, then getting out there and letting them do mass starts right away is great. Yeah, I think it's also part of the like whole you know system or goal of most skating federations is as a youth skater, that's also the case here in the US, you should be able to do all distances. You yeah. may, you know, genetically be more disposed to succeed in other distances than the ones you do, but being able to know how to start as a distance skater or have some sort of fitness or just, you know, skating economy efficiency as a sprinter, super crucial Yeah, when you're growing up. I mean, it's the same as our thought on all three disciplines. Yeah. Yeah, regardless, you know, don't specialize in one unless you're pretty darn sure that that's gonna be the one for you. And even when you are, you're gonna end up using those other modalities. Yeah. So you might as well get good at all three of those. Yeah, develop skills in whatever way is more convenient and more fun and then specialize whenever exactly. you, you reach a certain level. So do we have any tips on how to actually find a club or uh, yeah, where to look for these things? I, I think it's just wherever you can find a long track rink nearby you know, go for weekend camps there, see what clubs they have, or even during school vacation, whatever vacations, go out there and, and join people that know a little bit about skating. Right, and then for short track, um, I'd say most of the national governing bodies, so like in the US, US Speed Skating's website, can help you find where the local clubs are in your state, and I'm sure other NGBs uh, or governing bodies around the world have the same thing, which, you know, little trackers on yeah. how to find this <laughs> near you. You guys have any ideas or recommendations to the whole, you know, skating community or things we forgot to mention here? I think we and everybody else watching this would be pretty excited to hear from you in the comment section. So uh, leave a comment. Yep. And I think on the next one, we're going to dive a little bit deeper onto maybe some of the specifics of each discipline um, and really what the steps are to make it from first time on ice yeah. or on the skates to elite level. Yeah, it takes a lot more than, now we dive into the skating, but it takes a lot more. There's weightlifting, there's cycling, there's periodizing, there's, it's, no, whole time. There's ketones. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can dive into the rock and bend of the skates, uh, yeah, so. for sure, yeah, long track. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your time. See you for the next video.